third you leave it, is time will pass. Like an alien energy from outer space, it has captured the planet, completely enveloping or devouring it. Out of the earth it sucks a constant stream of life into itself, into existence, exhausting, poisoning, and destroying it in every form. Life, in every form, cries for mercy from it, in man for freedom from it. Yet none can resist its irresistible pull to live, and to live again. Here is the mystery of life and existence. Please close your eyes again. Enter the stillness, the eternal void. If you can find enough love or awareness in yourself, you will stay conscious and realize as you go deeper that you have been here many times before. But if your love is not yet sufficient to keep you awake, you will go unconscious. And when the journey through death is concluded, you will awake in a world equivalent to the love and consciousness you are. You will be more at home than ever before in your life. Either way you go, conscious or unconscious, you still arrive at journey's end. You will then realize that love is the most important thing in life, and that the world of the living exists purely for the demonstration of more love. You will see how far it is from love, and you will want to tell the whole world what you have discovered. But that won't be possible because you have to discover that and declare it and live it while you live. Everyone must discover the secret of love for themselves. If not before they die, then after. No one can be told. This is the never-never world of living on borrowed time. It's blatant disregard for the justice of who really owes whom and who really owes what creates the vicious injustice or imbalance that never stops growing between the poor and the rich, the handicapped and the strong, the starving and the sleep, the deprived and the privileged. So appallingly ill-balanced has it all become that only the end of time itself, which is now approaching, can settle the account.